Hello, welcome to the channel. Today we're teaming up with Malden Salt, whose sea salt we've been using ever since salted food was a glint in Ben's eye. Yep, using salt can really transform our cooking. So today we're asking our normals to taste test different dishes and approaches to see where it can really make a difference. Before we even begin, we have been using Malden salt since day one. How much do we actually know about what it is and where it comes from? Malden is a lovely little town on the coast of Essex, about 40 miles from our studio. Malden is fed by the River Blackwater, which is tidal, and the ebb and flow of the tides brings seawater to the flats. It's collected, filtered, the water is slowly and carefully evaporated, and you're left with salt crystals, which once dried, are ready to package. But much like the crystallisation of sugar in jams, syrups and caramels, and the tempering of chocolate with the crystal structure of cocoa butter, it's the careful, and top secret combination of time, temperature and raking that's still all done by hand that means Malden Salt has a very unique pyramid structure. I didn't realise Evers was such a seasoned pro. Oh. So lots of things to taste test today. Should we start with number one? Yes, please. Bring it. You've got two oh, plates. Oh, oh. Identical. However, the second plate, B, has already been seasoned with Malden salt. So what we'd quite like you to do is enjoy plate A, but the key here is the sea salt has been added to B about 20 or 30 minutes ago. And the use of sea salt and the time at which you imply it is really important. We're gonna take the saying with a pinch of salt, <laughs> purely because we've used salt loads of times. We know salt inside out, but this shouldn't surprise us. And it might not, but what we will do today is talk about the little things you can do that should transform it even based on what you know. Seasoning tomatoes mm. yep. has mm. been one of the biggest revelations that I've had in the last couple of years, of just even in a sandwich. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, just make sure a bit of salt on the tomato really brings out the flavour. And the reason being, tomato is full of natural glutamate. And if you add salt, you're essentially making monosodium glutamate. MSG! as a colossal difference. It was already delicious, but that's exciting. It awakens the senses. Suddenly you can really taste the tomato. And the reason being, yes, you're seizing it, but you're also drawing out the water from the tomato. So it's kind of acting like osmosis, which makes it slightly crunchier, but it also accentuates the natural sugars in the tomato and the natural acids in the tomato. So what is the advantage of using sea salt over table salt? Good question, Jamie. Yes, it would still have done the same thing to draw out the moisture and it would have made them salty, but it wouldn't have added in all the minerality that we love about sea salt. Plus, because table salt is typically fortified with iodine nowadays, it can even give off a slight bitterness. And while we're on the topic of sort of light summery seasonal salads, this is something else we've tried recently and we want to bring it back into the studio. Whipped butter at room temperature, radish, crisp but washed, that's all, and sea salt. In my 12 years at Sorted, I didn't think I'd be wowed by a bowl of butter with some radishes dipped in it. Another one of those things that is so obvious to people who have grown up doing it. Yeah. But it was kind of new to us. Yeah, completely like, you new. You know what? I didn't get much salt on that. I got mostly butter and it really needs the salt. Yeah, it does actually, doesn't it? Mm. Otherwise, it's greasy radish. Keep... <laughs> that's, that's a really good point. You're eating the leaves too. It's really important. And it is the reason we've started with salads because salt has been harvested from the coastline of Essex since Roman times. Romans were given a salarium, Roman soldiers, literally a, a ration of salt. It's where we still get the word salary from. They were literally paid in salt. And the soldiers would add salt to bitter leaves to make them more palatable and more balanced and more seasoning. And that's where we get the word salad from. I had never thought that salad and salary would be from the same word. It was also the Romans who would cure their pork products with salt too and make salami also the base of salt. This is blowing my mind from a linguistic perspective <laughs> before I've even eaten anything. So simple, so delicious and very naughty. One Shh. strong start. Yeah, one down and is that's already but fascinating. I, but I can't think where this is gonna go next. Then we better move on to round two. How foreboding. More salt in front of you, and something different under the cloche. That is a bowl tuna. of raw tuna. Simplicity at its best, 
some sustainable yellow fin tuna. All we have done is dice it up and toss it through with some good quality olive oil. So you have got the pepperiness and grassy notes of olive oil with the tuna. Try it on its own first, and then we'd like you to season it with smoked salt. That is stunning. A lot of olive oil, grassy, as you said. And let's be honest, we've deliberately asked the food team not to season anything, which has been more difficult than you imagine because it's just <laughs> second nature. But we really want to show the difference between if you season it with a smoked salt, and in particular, a smoked salt with that pyramid structure that has that really soft crunch. So you're adding texture to what is otherwise very soft tuna. And when it comes to seasoning quantities for something like this, how much salt are you actually using? as a chef. You've got to be sensible with it, right? So our bodies need salt to survive and your body can't create salt. So you have to consume it, but in moderation. I would say if you're enjoying something as premium and delicious as this, you want enough of that salt in there to take it to a level that is quite heavily seasoned to play off the irony kind of tuna and those grassy peppery notes of olive oil. This dish just gets exciting. Beforehand, it was a delicious bowl of tuna. Now. It's jumping back out the bowl of me. Not only can I taste the olive oil, mm -hmm. I can now taste the yeah. tuna where I couldn't taste the tuna before. And even better than that, the tuna has had a couple of cigars whilst <laughs> we've been sitting here. And that smokiness takes it to a different level than just the saltiness would have done. Plus you get the little crunch from biting into the oh, flakes. Smoky. Although this is super simple, just three ingredients, the smoked salt is also really nice in like marinades, where you might want that lick of smoke inside that you would often get from a barbecue or a tandoor or even a pizza oven. You can get some of that smokiness from that salt, like a mm. chicken tikka masala kind of marinated mm. chicken on a skewer with that salt. All meat. Sensational. Wow. Bring it on, Evers. Number three. A nutty CD mix. A, some uh, duka. Duka. Yes! The duka mix, I think traditionally Egyptian. It's absolutely delicious. It is a combination of lightly toasted seeds and nuts. But what we're basically saying is make an incredible flavoured salt. And you can do it yourself with sea salt, a pestle and mortar, and you can grind up all sorts of herbs or citrus into it. Or in this case, we're just going to mix in a combination of salt and seeds and nuts and lemon zest, and you have a seasoning mix that is just unreal. So many different applications for flavoured salts. It could just be mm -hmm. the zest, and you can go for things like pink grapefruit, mm -hmm. lime, uh, lemon. You can put loads of herbs through it and actually, with a pestle and mortar, turn the salt almost yeah. green. Pink peppercorns. In this case, we've gone for duka, one of our favourites here. Yeah. So duka, seedy, nutty, cumin-y mix of stuff. I tend to put it on meats. Grilled meats, grilled fish, hummus, whipped ricotta. Whoa. That is punchy in a good way. Both the lemon and the salt mm. are bringing their big game to the match. You absolutely need the lemon though, yeah. don't you? Otherwise it could, it almost verges on too salty and then and then the lemon comes and just gives it a smoothness. Bearing in mind what we've made there is kind of a seasoning salt on steroids. It's not supposed to be eaten off a teaspoon, it's no. supposed to be sprinkled over something. Would you like something? Uh, I would like guys, something. guys, I think it's time we spot. No, I would I'll come like in now. something. I'm just same, same. Holy moly. What you've got there is a bed of whipped ricotta, new potatoes, asparagus, and some seared steak. Again, painful not to have seasoned any of that during the cooking, but if you've got delicious seasoned and flavoured salts at home, you can dip into them whenever you want. Oh, wow. So now, rather than just eating a teaspoon of your duka mix, perhaps a tablespoon sprinkled over the entire dish will be lovely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cheers. Fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, it's adding texture, mm. whilst it's also seasoning, whilst it's also taking what could be the same salad you have a few nights in a, in a mm. row to different places, depending on different flavoured salts. Wow. 
And how long would the flavoured sauce last for? So because you've zested the lemon really fine, that'll essentially dry out with the salt in there. So for ages and forever. Okay, cool. I mean, the spices cool. obviously will deteriorate over time, yeah. but it's not going to go off. The other way of doing it would be to take the whole peel off of the citrus, dry it out in the oven, blend it up, and then put it through gotcha. so you get a dried citrus peel through it. But if you zest it, the salt kind of dries and cures it anyway. Okay. Salt is there to preserve. This is, this is transformative. Whipped ricotta, and then anything you like. Dunk. Duca. Doof. <laughs> Duca. And it tastes amazing. To duke. To duke or something. You, no, you duke it. <laughs> duke duke duke. Right, that's amazing. What I like about the way that this video is going is that there's no difficult techniques involved. Absolutely it's not. Use this and combine it with this or use it in this way. And all of them are completely achievable and all of them will help me improve my cooking. Duke. We're in the Duke crew. <laughs> right, number four. Mm. Number four. This is a bit of a thought experiment. Let's see how it goes. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. why am I here for, for your experiment? I like that. You stay there. <laughs> am I the control? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, it looks like an experiment. Pink, <laughs> pink pizza. What we've given you is some homemade flatbreads with a beetroot hummus, some cress, some cheese, and some toasted hazelnuts. The one on the left, A, have a slice of that. Do you got all your mum? Do not. <laughs> I got some beetroot. I've got the creaminess of the mozzarella. Quite sweet, isn't it, as well? Mm, quite sweet. And some pepperiness mm. from the cress. Mm. Very nice. Try a slice from flatbread too. It looks exactly the same. I'm looking for flakes of sea salt and I can't see them. No. Oh, there's lots of eyebrow raising. What are we getting? There's more than salt in that. Yeah. There was salt, the same amount in both. What did you do to it? It's all about where, where you stick it. Where you put it. No It's on the way. bottom. Barry, it's on the bottom. Which, it's on the bottom. when you eat a slice of flatbread or pizza, is the first thing that hits your tongue. So the other one also had the same amount of sea salt in it, but you can see it's on top. It's covered with everything else. And whilst it is seasoning it for you, and it is giving you the taste of beetroot and the taste of cress no. and drawing out those flavours. No way. The second one, the salt hits your tongue. No Thought way. experiment worked and you get a different reaction. I didn't think it would make that much of a difference. My only problem with this is, in real life, you have to be really organised for this to work. Because usually, you play something, you go, ah, oh, seasoning, oh no, the bottom. As with making any flatbread or dough, we didn't put salt in the dough, which again feels a bit odd, but to put salt into the dough, you have to put a fair amount in. This way, you then roll it out, and we just put a sprinkle of salt in the pan that we cooked it in. So you put it in the pan, you put the bread down, and it kind of sticks to the dough as it cooks. One is just seasoning, where one is giving you the, the sea salt kick because it's touching your tongue first. It's oh, because it your tongue's on the bottom, isn't it? I, yeah, <laughs> I think so, yeah. That's where your taste buds are. Oh, I didn't think it made that much difference. The second time around, it tasted like there was honey in it or something. It all tasted sweeter, but that's because I was hit with salty first, but everything else then laid on top of it, mm -hmm. that tasted sweet. So there are lots of times when where you put the salt is important. In order to get the same seasoning kick, you'd have had to use almost twice as much salt in the first one for it to have the same effect. And we know that while salt is required by the body, we should also moderate it. So perhaps putting it on the bottom of pizzas and flatbread might mean you get that lovely kick that you want, but with less of it. Ever's top tip. Last one. And strong, and strong. Oh, yes! <laughs> Obviously, oh. salt is typically associated with savoury, but it doesn't have to be. Salt and chocolate, no brainer. Oh, like there's caramel, caramel in there. What you have is some lovely profiteroles, so shoe pastry filled mm. with caramel custard oh. and topped oh with my. dark chocolate. Oh my. This is not by any means a first or new. We've done dark chocolate with sea salt before. We've done uh, caramel as salted caramel before, but I'm not sure we've ever done the two side by side mm. before and after. Oh, cheers. So this is sans salt. Yep. Uh -oh. Which again, even a pastry chef would tell you is odd to make shoe paste without salt, but we have done in this instance. It tastes good, but do you know what? It tastes like a normal made it. It tastes homemade. Mm -hmm. Like it's all there and you go, that's nice. Mm -hmm. There's no wow factor. There's just a, oh yeah, that's nice. Right. It's sweet. Do your it? magic. Well, cheers. Mm. 
Wow. That is amazing, actually. Mm. Like the fact that thinking about mm. it, just this ingredient that everyone uses all the time, you don't have to do anything to it. You just put it on something and it makes a colossal amount of difference. It's still such a backwards way of thinking that something that's really sweet needs a bit of salt to help improve the flavour. Yeah. Yeah, and that's about not adding a flavour, it's about adding the seasoning that brings out the flavours. It that are just ups there. the volume levels of all the flavours that are already in the mm -hmm. dish. I'm glad you said that because ho we were hoping that the salt would make it more caramelly and sort of draw out those caramel tones, the rich dark chocolate, that kind of unctuousness, more than just make it salty. Interestingly, salt on things like fruit is also really nice. On tropical fruit, a little bit of salt in a mango lassi or a banana lassi is amazing. You can put salt around the rim of glasses in cocktails that are particularly sweet and fruit juice and with lime. What it does each time is just bring out the flavours of what is already in it. I know it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. So I've learned nothing here, but I've experienced the difference. And I've never sat down and tried something before seasoning and after. No. And that's what's been really fascinating about this because it just sort of accentuates the value of using yeah. the right salt in the right places. But what I also like is that we found out that it's not necessarily about the amount that you add. No. It's when you add it yeah. and where you add it yeah. as well. And something like sea salt, I would still stand and say, don't put in everything. If you're making a brine or you are salt crusting something or you're seasoning a big pan of water to boil vegetables, I don't think it's going to make any difference. There's not going to be a noticeable difference in the flavour and the minerality and the soft textural crunch. You won't get any of that because it's all dissolved. It's still, in all of the applications today, a finishing salt. But it is about the when, the where and the how and what it's doing to give you more than just saltiness, sodium chloride, but minerality as well. So a big thanks to Morden Salt for helping us dig into an ingredient we've been using for over a decade. If you want to find out more about Morden, all the links are in the description box down below. And we'd love to hear how you use sea salt at home. Comment down below, let us know. Well, you turn your head sideways though a lot of the time, oh, don't yeah, you? Yeah, but, yeah, but, but gravity, when you do that, your tongue goes sideways as well. <laughs> you have to check. No, I, I leave it down there. <laughs> He's changing, like, he's trying to get... <laughs> I don't really know, it doesn't make any sense.